This video is designed to help you understand the details of becoming board certified in neurofeedback. First of all, let's start with looking at who's eligible. There are two levels of certification. One is a professional certification. Interestingly, that person seeking a professional certification doesn't need to be licensed, but needs to understand that they cannot treat if they are not licensed to treat certain behaviors. So for instance, you could be a person that has a bachelor's degree in psychology that coaches athletes and you can get certified in neurofeedback. So the candidates that want professional level certification must hold a bachelor's degree in a BCIA approved healthcare field. And that includes psychology, medicine, nursing, physical therapy, OT, social work, counseling, marriage and family therapy, rehab, chiropractic, recreational therapy, PA, who are certified or licensed, exercise physiology, speech pathology, and sports medicine. Additionally, licensed RNs are accepted for certification with an associate's degree, but they must work under an MD. And the following people with a master's degree in music and counseling education also qualify. There are other degrees in healthcare fields that can be submitted to BCIA for review if they're not on this list. There's also a technician level of certification. And in order to be certified as a technician, you have to be working under somebody who is both licensed and is certified at the professional level. Now you can go ahead and meet the requirements for becoming certified as a technician and then obtain a job and then take your test to become certified. For more information, um, it's very helpful to reach out to BCIA, info at bcia.org. We'll get you the best response. Part of the requirements of certification are taking a didactic course, which is 36 hours long. The Seder Psychological BCIA course is approved by BCIA. And you can also meet this requirement by completing a three semester hour university course um, or its equivalent um, as long as the course covers the BCIA blueprint. As part of another requirement for mentoring, uh, for certification, you need to be mentored. Mentors usually charge between 100 and 150 an hour. And as part of that mentoring, you need to cover a number of things within 25 contact hours with a BCIA approved mentor. And that mentor is going to review with you 10 sessions of personal neurofeedback where you demonstrate self-regulation, 100 sessions of patient or client assessment and treatment, 10 case study presentations, and by the way, one of those is included in your SADAR BCI course. We recommend that you have more than one mentor so that you're exposed to different approaches and that you have a mentoring agreement with each mentor. That's an agreement between you and the mentor explaining what you can expect from them and what they can expect from you. I want to mention that when we talk about sessions of personal neurofeedback or patient treatment, they need to be a minimum of 20 minutes long. Two of the hours of your mentoring must be face-to-face. -face, um, and now we all can do that very easily via, uh, via Zoom or WhatsApp or some other platform. Uh, you can also do it over the telephone, um, but most people are now doing a face-to-face -face thing electronically. With our mentors, we will set up a Zoom meeting and a simultaneous um, session via Parsec, which is a platform that allows us to look into your neurofeedback system and see exactly what you're doing. Included with your BCIA course, um, you have one hour of mentoring with either me 
um, or Mitch. And we have other mentors that are on our team as well. Uh, they are not included in the one hour that's included with your course, but we can set up times for you with other mentors. And all course attendees get a reduced fee of 125, where we usually charge 135 an hour for mentoring. Um, please be sure to email me to make sure that you get your one hour free mentoring, um, you know, set up when it's convenient for you. Also, as part of your certification, you have to demonstrate that you participated in the review of 10 case studies. One case study is included in your BCIA course, so now you have nine left. Uh, the most economical way to obtain your case studies is through BCIA at this link, and this will take you to recordings of case studies that they have available for you, and many of them uh, contain more than one case study. They may contain one or two. You need to take a neuroanatomy, neurophysiology course uh, within the last 10 years. If you have not taken that as part of your college coursework, um, we recommend that you take Fred Schaefer's course. This is a self-paced course for $150. You can buy it online. He does also recommend books to supplement the course. Um, I wanna mention that the course is a PowerPoint. You're not interacting with Fred. He's not recording anything. So, but he has tons of information and it's very useful. You need to submit an application at some point to BCIA. There's an application fee of $150 and here's a link for that fee for you. Uh, you need to take a written examination at some point. That's going to be accessed through the link that we have here. It's a three hour um, examination. Uh, it's mostly multiple choice. It covers the blueprint, so it should be covering areas that are covered in the course you're taking. Um, used to be that the exams were offered at university locations, but now, again, with COVID, all exams are virtual. Um, if you're a professional, there are going to be 100 questions on your exam, and if you're taking the technician exam, there's going to be 50 questions. Um, in addition to the fee, you have to pay a proctor fee, and um, that's an online proctor fee, and a separate fee paid directly to the proctoring service. So it's a little bit confusing. So in all, it's $300 plus $20 for the proctoring service. You can retake the exam if you need to. There's a fee for that. As you complete these different requirements, you can submit them to BCIA. Your mentor must have an approved application on file with BCIA, and you need to submit to BCIA a mentoring log that's signed by both yourself and your mentor. And your mentor must submit an essential skills form to BCIA on your behalf. And as I said, you have to take the test. So once you've done all of that, you've passed your test, you're going to be certified. And then what do you do? Keep practicing neurofeedback, keep learning. Uh, there's lots of opportunities for learning. You can look at AAPB, um, ISNR, the Northeast Region Biofeedback Society is a local organization that offers courses and keeps um, courses online. And then there are study groups that you'll come to find as you get to meet people. So reach out to people, attend conferences, talk to people, um, know that we are here to support you and we want to make this process as convenient and as um, profitable for you as we can, both profitable in terms of being able to enhance your practice, being able to enhance the outcome of your clients, and being able to enhance your self-satisfaction. So thanks very much, and feel free to call me anytime or reach out to me. You should know how to do that by now. Bye now.